I remember one particular experience that, that left a mark and continues to leave a mark with, with me. The nature of our relationship, the nature of his position, um, it, it really, really troubled me. Um, and I really struggled with, with, with that. My name is Enrique Moreno. I'm an attorney that practices law here in El Paso. Uh, I do civil trial work, uh, which can involve a variety of different things, civil rights work, uh, employment, discrimination uh, work. I was a founding member of the El Paso County Board of Ethics, where we tried to establish sort of norms for you know, county, county government, and I've been involved in initiatives of, of that type over the years. As a lawyer, and, and you know, lawyers are not unlike other professions, we have standards of, of, of conduct in lawyers that practice. Uh, we have the, the rules of professional responsibility that are passed as, as members of the bar, uh, and they govern our, our conduct uh, in respect to our, our relationship to clients, our relationship with other lawyers, our relationship with, with, with judges, and, and these are norms and standards that we're supposed to adhere to. If we don't adhere to, there, there could be consequences. I remember one particular experience that, that left a mark and continues to leave a mark with, with me. Uh, I, had, um, I was approached by, by a judge, uh, somebody um, who I deeply respected, somebody that I considered um, a mentor. And he asked me to do something that, in my view, was unethical um, because of the nature of our relationship, the nature of his position. Um, it, it really, really troubled me, um, and I really struggled with 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 that. And it, it was a, it was a it was a difficult experience. It still uh, I carry it to the, to this day. Um, at the end. I refused to do what, what he asked me to do, and I, um, I lost that, that relationship. And so I lost a friend, I, I lost a mentor, and we, we don't communicate with, with, with each other. I'm sure he has a, perhaps a different view than I did, but to me it, it was an ethical decision, and um, I, I did not feel comfortable doing what he asked me to do. You know, at, at oftentimes when you're confronted with this decision, you, you really think it's, it's, it's sort of difficult and, and you second guess yourself and, and you analyze and uh, oftentimes you see them as really sort of close decisions. As time has progressed, um, it wasn't that difficult a decision. I mean, it was, it was clear what was ethical, what was right, what was the appropriate thing to do when you find yourself at the beginning, in the midst of that decision, sometimes it, it seems a little cloudier. Uh, you, you have sort of these internal debates with, with, with yourself. As time passes, the clarity uh, has, has come. It was absolutely the right thing to do. It was inappropriate what that judge asked me to, to do, and I did the right thing, and, and I can live with myself. Uh, had I chosen the opposite, I guess you can always rationalize, you can always justify you know, uh, something uh, on it. I'm glad that I chose how I, I chose. And, uh, and if anything, it's so reinforced that, that I do have a, a moral uh, compass and it, it works. I think if you were to ask in El Paso, who are the best lawyers? Who are the most successful lawyers? You will find that they were the lawyers that are most ethical um, and those are the ones that are more respected. So I think you, with respect to these types of decisions, especially young people, if you look sort of long term, there is no incompatibility between ethics and success. In fact, I think the reverse is true.